Yay. Welcome, everyone. We want to be respectful of your time. And so we're starting right on time. We've got um, great information coming ahead of you. So welcome to our Healthy Living Educational Evening. We have uh, um, with us on a regular basis. The month of February is known for being the heart month. We're concentrating on the emotional and mental side that affects our hearts and our well being. Next month, we will have three part series with our very own Dr. Morris regarding pregnancy. So we're calling it March into Pregnancy. And that we're going to be talking about pre, during, and post pregnancies. So that will be very interesting. My name is Socorro Dunn, and I'll be hosting tonight with Andrea Dunn and Dr. Melinda Morris. She is actually uh, at the polls at the moment, so she'll be joining us shortly and she'll be fielding our questions. So Andrea will be introducing uh, her later. So we are glad you chose to be with us tonight. You could have been doing something else, but you chose to be on Wednesday night learning about your health. And thank you for that. While you're listening to this webinar, I hope you're take notes and write down any questions you have so we can ask Dr. Morris at the end. So, and, and ask any questions, or also if you think of anybody that could use this information, we'll be recording it. And so ask the person that invited you, so we'll give you the link to it. So let's get started. So let me get us to the webinar. <clears throat> see can y'all see this just tell me yes or no because i can't see y'all yes yes awesome here we go Welcome to the Healthy Living Revolution Live. My name is Jennifer Myers. The Healthy Living Revolution is a movement of people who are taking healthy back, and we're offering this series to bring some simple solutions and education. Our speaker for this episode is Dr. Candace Corson. Dr. Corson received both her undergraduate college degree and her medical degree from Yale University. She completed her residency in family medicine at the University of Rochester, New York. She and her husband, George, both served as non-commissioned officers in the United States Public Health Service in rural North Carolina. Dr. Corson later went into integrative medicine after studying nutritional therapy to help her patients recover much better from chronic illness like asthma and autoimmune disorders. She's a national health educator on nutrition and health recovery and environmental illness. So we thank you so much, Dr. Corson, for being here. We're excited to hear your information on this very important topic of depression and anxiety. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Jennifer. And it's an honor for me to get to share the one of the biggest challenges for human beings on our planet today. And it's actually uh, a, a disease process or a disorder that has a lot of th a lot of things that we can do for both prevention and help that have to do with the nutritional piece and that is the entity that we call depression and also its um, other component which is anxiety and the World Health Organization recently declared that this is the single largest illness in the world, if you look at numbers of people affected in a negative way, uh, work hours and months and years lost of human beings around the world, and the biggest economic burden. We might think that would be heart disease or cancer, but it's actually depression. So it is an epidemic of our times, and the good news is we're going to talk about ways that we can actually help ourselves and our loved ones that we might not have known about before. So much is being learned today that's going to make a difference for people. So we, we know that if you're worried, and some people are, and I can really relate to this, that maybe you have a family history 
of depression, anxiety, and um, mental health challenges, it's good to be aware of family history. And I think it gives us license to take extra special care of ourselves and our loved ones. But it is not a mandate that this is going to happen to you or your children. And that's because our DNA blueprint is not our destiny. We know that, for example, only 3% of what determines our longevity is our genetic blueprint. The rest of the 97% has to do with our nutrition and the things that happen to us environmentally, lifestyle, attitude, and community support. So it's really, that's really good news. Well, one of the most amazing things that we have seen in recent years is the rise of a study of the little good germs that live inside of us. And they make an ecology inside us that really determines so much of our health and our quality and our brain function, our mood, even our, our, our longevity and illness patterns. And that is called the microbiome, that collection of germs inside of our intestinal area. And as recently as 2011, it would have been considered very unusual to talk about any association between those little germs and our behavior and our thoughts and our um, emotional status. But now science is finding out that there are huge links to brain function, and that includes for depression and anxiety. And I love the title of this New York Times article, Germs in Your Gut Are Talking to Your Brain. So there's another article of many, and just putting this up here to let you know that scientists are really working hard to try to help human beings on this, this whole level. Uh, it's a fancy title, but the neuroactive potential, the potential of the human gut microbiota, that's the good little germs in the gut, in quality of life and depression. And I think that's really good news that we can affect those little good germs by giving them the right foods that they need to grow on. And it happens that those are plant foods. So when we see in the next slide, this is one of the most famous quotes in all of Western medicine by the great physician Hippocrates, and it is, let food be thy medicine, let medicine be thy food. And he was actually talking about the base of our food supply needing to be plants. Human beings uh, developed being plant-based. If they ate animal foods, those animals were also plant-based and not fed on factory farm foods and vast quantities of grains from cereal grains. They were eating pure plants from the earth. And we know that the colors of life are actually the protectors of life. The colors actually mark protective molecules that do all kinds of important supportive things for the human body and the human brain and the human immune system and the gut. And I love this next slide. I always put this in any talk I give because I just think it's so beautiful. The architecture, the color, uh, these are peas, of course, a wonderful source of protein, very high quality protein, and many, many phytonutrients or plant nutrients. Well, we know that science is now clear that plant-based nutrition, that is going as far towards eating more plants, simply adding more plants, protects our health. There are thousands of studies on the epidemiology of that, that populations who eat large quantities, of, you might say a rainbow of colors of fresh high quality produce, actually have far greater longevity and far less chronic illness, including heart disease, cancer, uh, Alzheimer's, dementia, and um, in inflammatory diseases. And brain problems also go along with that. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, how inflammatory burden or excess inflammation really is a driver or a worsener of brain problems, including depression, even bipolar depression and anxiety. But I love this next Recording list here. Progress. These are the these conditions, are the that, conditions human that human beings experience associated with a whole food, whole plant deficit. And you can see Alzheimer's disease, which is brain cell loss, altered immune function, which means too much inflammation for many people. And on this list also depression, cognitive thinking disorders, learning and behavior disorders, and I would put anxiety right up there. So why do we need fruits and vegetables, sources of plant foods? 
Well, when we eat food, any kind of food, but particularly if it has any kind of healthy fat content, and we're going to get to that in a minute too, the support of every cell membrane in the entire body and every cell of the brain, the cell membrane being made of the fat we eat and needing to be made of high quality omega fats, no matter what kind of high quality fats we may be fortunate to take in, if we do not have a strong plant intake on a daily basis and of a wide variety and high quality, then we do not have our antioxidant shield. And what happens is that we actually oxidize these good fats. They're called lipid peroxides or fats that have been oxidized. And we no, no longer have healthy fats. We have rancid or damaged oxidized fats. And that is actually not good for the human body. And much of this oxidation process is permanent. So the good news is that plants are the actual source of the antioxidants that we need. We cannot do them in an isolated vitamin form, and we need to do it in the whole plant form. There's a lot of really important research showing that we need to do it through eating whole plant foods. One of the reasons is because the massive amount of plant molecules that are donated in the perfect order, the perfect balance, the perfect ratio, nothing missing that mother nature has put into each plant food. And all of them are different and give us a different overlap of protective phytonutrients, plant nutrients. If you see here what's in an apple, this is 250 names of so far identified plant molecules that we need to run our body and run our brain. But there are really some 10,000 in a whole clean apple. So you'd need uh, really a lot of these. Um, you could poster you know, your whole house with pictures of <laughs> like this one to make up 10,000 nutrients. And that's why vitamins that we thought were important decades ago uh, will not work when we isolate them out. It needs to be the whole food. So I love this next uh, overview that plants nourish the brain and protect against inflammation. They contain, and this is just a very short list of a huge list of some of the important compounds that we know so far, and we're learning more all the time, are contained in plants. The berry group provide anthocyanins, those beautiful blue and purple colors that you would get from blueberries and European blueberries, which are bilberries, elderberries, raspberries, blackberries, the list goes on, pomegranate, grapes. The lutein uh, greens and golden colors uh, found in many plants, but especially the dark green leafy vegetables. And then our omega fatty acids, which are produced by plants, and we often think of using fish oil, we'll get to that in just a minute, which people have used over the years, but now uh, at the frontier of science, people are realizing that the base of where the fish get their essential fatty acids or their good omega fats is they do not make them, they get them from their food chain and then they concentrate them. And the base of the food chain uh, in water would be the water plants, uh, chiefly algae in the oceans. And on land, land plants also can um, deliver those very well, but they're not the kind of plants that most of us are eating. They're not the grain, the seed grain crops like corn and soybean and so forth as far as the omegas. But what I love is this quote here from this article, oxidative stress, that's the stress of our, every cell in our body and our brain experiences from oxidizing, not having enough plant antioxidants. And this one even refers to the genesis or the origin of Alzheimer's disease, which is the loss of brain cells. But this also applies oxidation and inflammation together to brain function, including our mood and our ability to interact with others. So we know that the gut-brain connection is very, very important, and I think it gives a lot of hope because what it means is that what we eat on a daily basis over time makes an enormous difference, either on the downside if we're cut off from a rainbow of healthy, high-quality plant foods, or on the upside 
if we do have the knowledge and also the means to bring these plants in a wide rainbow, a wide, wide spectrum of colors and different species into our body on a regular basis. And we know that recent studies have shown over and over that fruits and vegetables can improve mood. And this is really huge. There are many studies, this just highlights one of them in United Kingdom finding that consuming at least seven or eight veggies daily made a meaningful impact on mood, greater feelings of happiness, less risk of depression and anxiety, and improved thinking, cognitive function, and memory, and the production of a very important neurotransmitter called serotonin. We actually know from studies along the, the last 10 to 15 years that you cannot actually produce enough serotonin to be functioning well and have proper mood and get along well in your life and with people if you do not have an intake of green leafy plants providing you the folate the natural healthy important folate that we need to even make serotonin happen so i love this also from uh, the world economic forum a nice article on the microbiome again the collection of the ecology of the germs in our gut Fruits and vegetables are high in prebiotic fiber, which is good for the gut. Well, it's not only good for the gut, it's mandatory for human health because the fibers that human beings uh, do not digest, we used to think of them as undigestible or indigestible fibers, we now know that's the purpose of them. And very intelligently so, when we eat plant materials, our body does a very good job of breaking down, digesting, and assimilating as much of the calories, the energy intake, the protein, the fats that it can from those plants. And then what's left over very purposefully is what we have called in the past indigestible fiber. And that is the exact food that the good germs are looking for. Isn't that clever? We need to have those plant foods to have the fibers and the nutrients that those good germs need. And that's called prebiotic. We've heard the term antibiotic um, starting some decades ago with the ability to kill uh, bad germs that are hurting a person, um, giving them time, hopefully, for their immune system to take over and set things right. Then the idea of probiotics being the good germs that we are losing by using antibiotics, or good germs that we cannot most of them grow in the laboratory and therefore they only grow in the human gut and it's, therefore it's very difficult to make an adequate probiotic since you can't grow most of them in the lab. Um, but the uh, new term is prebiotic, meaning the foundational food that the good germs need to grow on. And personally, I feel that for most people, it's more important that they get good prebiotic food every day feeding themselves and the good germs than it is necessarily to purchase a few strains of probiotics that we've been able to grow in the lab. Because if there are even a few little organisms, like many different species that we need, they will come back when they get their food, which is the prebiotic food foundation for them, which is plant foods. It turns out that those good germs are vegan, we don't necessarily need to always be all of us vegan, strictly plant-based, but we need to feed ourselves a wide enough rainbow of plants today, and very intentionally so, to recover our health, because there are a lot of things damaging our microbiome today. So I love this one, being good to our immune system and our gut. 70% of our immune system is in the intestine, and that is closely linked to brain. It's really the gut, immune system brain connection. The brain has lots of immune cells. It is uh, easily upregulated in terms of being too inflamed when the rest of us is inflamed and we're, when our gut is losing good germs, such as with a course of antibiotics, even when very needed, and that's a blessing, we're still going to be upregulating our inflammatory response. So I think eating these prebiotic foods, which are plants, is really key. And a lot of people love learning that because they can change many times what they're eating. And the good germs can come back pretty quickly. 
we can lose good germs quickly and we can replenish them quickly with feeding good quality plant foods. Now, this is one other term that I'd like to share, which uh, many people have not heard of, but it's a, such an interesting term. We've heard of antibiotics, which are chemicals killing germs, probiotics, good germs that we want to replace, and especially when we want to feed them. And then we've heard of prebiotic, which is the foundational food for the good germs. Well, how about this term, psychobiotics? how your gut bacteria can mess with your mind. This is a very good article from the New Scientist magazine and really talking about the impact of feeding our microbiota, our good germs, and being able to um, have better mental health. And that's really a big promise of the future. And we've already seen that programs such as feeding prisoners or feeding school children much better quality food, much more plant-based and high quality, results in better behavior, less violence, better thinking, less tendency to anxiety and to depression. And I love this relatively new book by two PhDs, Justin and Erica Sonnenberg, The Good Gut. This is one of my husband's favorite books to share with the medical students that he teaches because it touches on all of these subjects we've been talking about. And I love this taking um, control of your mood. It's one of the things on this cover and your long-term health. One of the other things and, um, we see in the next slide that plants do for us is allow our liver to do the best that it can with detoxifying us from the tremendous burden of foreign to nature chemicals that everyone carries today on our planet, even in remote areas. And many times when people check um, the cord blood, the blood from brand new newborn babies, they find many, many, many chemicals already present in these babies just starting out their lives. So these are put into our environment by inadvertently by our civilization uh, through our industrial processes. And uh, these include hundreds of thousands of foreign to nature chemicals all of which are doing things not designed by nature for us and interfering, but in a symphony now, which has synergistic problems. Basically, we need to just say, our liver is trying to help us take these from fat soluble, which most of them are, to water soluble and be able to kick them out through the bile and then eliminate them from the body. Bottom line, a wide variety of high quality plants allows a better detoxification through the liver. So we're actually kicking toxins out of the body. Those are very important um, for brain function, which is one of the most elegant functions of the body. So I wanna share some hope based on science and it's a way to bridge the gap between the very best a person can do every single day in nourishing themselves with plant foods, a wide variety, wide rainbow, uh, and where our body really needs to go today. So it's bridging from the best we can do to where we really need to be today. And I love these capsules. Even though I personally cannot swallow capsules, it's what's inside that matters. And I have been opening these every day for myself and also babies in our family starting at about six months old when they're starting their baby food and putting this concentrated pure dried powdered produce of a rainbow of 30 species into uh, water for myself or baby food for the little ones or smoothies or applesauce for one of the elders in our family and really taking advantage of this wide rainbow of pure plant food of 30 specific species. On the left, you see the pink or almost red color, which is the 10 fruits. In the middle, the vegetable blend and on the right, the berry blend. And those colors are natural. Those are the, remember the colors we talked about in the beginning, that is the protectors of the human body and brain. And I love this about this, this nutraceutical. It really is the premier nutraceutical or nutrition product in the world because of the level of independent scientific scrutiny well over 20 years of peer-reviewed published independent clinical research from major universities across the United States and around the world. There are now 39 
peer-reviewed published studies in excellent journals, including the American College of Cardiology, the Journal of Nutrition, um, and the Journal of the American uh, Sports uh, Medicine, Academy of Sports Medicine. And it, what, here's what it looks like in the bottles and coming out of the bottles with that wonderful color, the berries, the vegetables, and the fruit blend. And when you combine that, uh, seeing in the next slide with the plant protein powders that we have, for those who do like to have shakes or um, smoothies, a pure plant-based smoothie, which gives macronutrients also in the form of high quality protein from all from plants, not from animals. It's all vegan, non-genetically modified, and non-gluten, uh, all the products. You see that there is a very wide rainbow of plant power, and I, I like to call it, think of it as plant power. And then which hospitals and universities have actually conducted independent research on Juice Plus? It's a big list, and uh, it includes uh, universities from A, the Academic Center for Dentistry in Amsterdam, uh, Brigham Young University, uh, all the way. It's A to Y to Yale University and many fine universities in between. And then scientific journals, which have deemed it important to publish this research, include those which are read by people in their specialties and just a wide array of um, high quality research that you, you just cannot buy your way into these uh, publications. The research has found multiple things about human physiology that are the baseline for our health that allow the body to do its best in challenging circumstances, whatever those may be. And it includes that it's bioavailable, gets into the bloodstream where it's needed, multiple studies on that. And I'll just touch on a few of them here. You can see the slides, but Contributing to cardiovascular wellness, that's important for the brain because with every pump of the heart, the brain takes and needs 25% of that blood flow. Circulation is tremendously important for brain function. Immune health, we had touched on that, that the brain is a highly immune organ and that inflammatory overload and burden places an inflammatory burden on the brain, which does not help us with our brain function and does not help us with our mood or ability to interact or deal uh, with the stresses of today's world. The more inflamed the brain, the worse off a person is with their mental health. And then looking at DNA protection. Again, our DNA is not our destiny. And I love that because I personally um, have had a lot of experience more than I would have chosen with um, mental illness and even including various types of bipolar illness within my family and extended family. So I have a huge heart and compassion for people who are either dealing with this personally, but always it is a family situation, family and circle of friends that are affected. And I think knowing that there are things we can do to turn on good genes and switch off problematic genes, that nutrition is a big central part of that. It's very, very reassuring. So next we can look at um, the uh, cardiovascular benefits and really uh, just know that when you're helping your heart and your circulatory system, you're helping your brain. The same thing when you're helping your entire immune system to become less inflamed. And I, I think this is kind of a startling picture, but the idea is that our brain needs plants. It needs us to be eating plants on a daily basis in a lot of different kinds. Lastly, I want to talk about the omega fats. And many people are realizing that there are problems with using fish oil. Um, it's not as much of a benefit for human health as it was thought a few years ago. And part of this is that the origin of the good omegas are not with the fish, they're concentrating it from the plant base. So if you go to the plant base, you're, you're doing, for one thing, uh, something good for the planet and the oceans, which is quite important to everyone. But for human health, you're decreasing the amount of contamination and you're decreasing the need to apply heat to decontaminate fish oil. So with this, uh, the Omega blend, which is made from sea plants and land plants, provides nature's balance of omegas 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9, 
and a broad spectrum, again, of the omegas provided by plants is preferable to isolating and using one kind. And I love this quote from the great Dr. Richard Du Bois, infectious disease expert, every single cell in your body needs omegas. They provide the building blocks that are non-negotiable for the lining of every cell, the cell membrane. And that's where all the activity takes place in terms of communication. All the neurotransmitters arrive at the cell membrane to do their work of connecting everything in the body. And this uh, coming to the uh, picture about what it looks like in the hand to be that looks like health, it looks like strength. And again, it's not instead of eating produce, it's bridging the gap from the best a person can do to where we really need to be today. And lastly, I want to share just a bit about the power of nature and of gardening and the tower gardens that are made by the Juice Plus Company, where people, whether they're in urban areas with no access to land or whether they're indoors in, let's say, um, hospital settings, schools, um, elder care facilities, they can actually have access to growing fresh, pure plants without pesticides and with a great deal of nutrition right on the premises. And even if that's the rooftop in cities, it works really well. And that's the Tower Garden by Juice Plus. I want to finish by saying there's a vitamin that I have come to regard very highly as I was thinking about this this past year, it's vitamin G for gratitude. Sometimes I look at behavior that can occur either for myself or others and think, I think there's some vitamin G deficit there, deficiency of vitamin G. And gratitude does so much to alter our mood for the better. It's difficult to be in gratitude and in a persistently angry state or afraid state, gratitude helps with all of that. So I call it vitamin G. And I think all of us can make a difference in our own lives and other people's lives by being a little kinder or maybe a lot kinder uh, in our own internal thinking and our behavior to towards others. And I love this to make a difference in someone's life. You don't have to be brilliant, rich, beautiful, or perfect. You just have to care. So I love our message of touching future generations. Our children are our future. And I'm hoping that some of this can be really helpful in terms of decisions on how to feed your family uh, from all stages, from pregnancy through old age, that more plants can give us a better quality of life and better ability to be happier in our lives. And it really is bigger than we have thought in the past, the impact of adding plant nutrition. Thank you so much. And I hope this has been useful today. Candace, thank you so much for inviting me to share my story. And thank you so much for the incredible information. My name is Dahlia Brown, and I'm an occupational therapist and integrative medicine mental health provider. I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder at 15, as well as anxiety. I was raised in a medically based family, and since my father is a brilliant neurologist, I always thought medicine was the answer and had all the answers. I couldn't keep a job for more than six months because I would fall into a deep depression and not show up to work. I remember being in a black hole spiraling down on different pills and lots of combinations. Many days, just getting out of bed and taking my dog out was the most that I could think about. And when the basic necessities of living, like brushing my teeth and showering, is such a chore, I don't know if you can relate, but it made me feel completely helpless and hopeless. When people tried to tell me that food and nutrition could make a difference, I thought, oh my, they don't know the level of depression that I have. If they knew, they would never say that to my face. I believed my DNA was my destiny and my depression was genetic and I would be on medication for the rest of my life. I had no idea when someone shared Juice Plus with me, it was the catalyst that I needed. I had no idea that flooding my body with fruits and vegetables and having that in a capsule would help me to start to get out of bed, have a little bit more energy, shower, brush my teeth, do physical activities, and use the tools that I've learned in therapy, like reaching out for help, meditating, drinking water, and showering. I could take some capsules. You know, my emotional bandwidth was so small because of a depressed body and a depressed brain, but taking some capsules and eating a, a smoothie every single day, I could do that. That was so simple. 
And it started healing my body from the inside out. And this Juice Plus community helped me out of my isolation. They loved me and believed in me more than I believed in myself, even when I would disappear from life. I met a naturopath in this community, and she led me through a gut healing protocol that included the Juice Plus products as well as other changes. And I've now been off of my antidepressants and all meds for, for just over two years. I'm not saying that this will be everybody's story. But the old patterns and neuro pathways that had developed over decades of depression, they're healed. And the simple act of flooding my body with produce has healed me from the inside out. And now I, now I know what my body needs to stay healthy. This path has led my career, my emotional and physical health down a pathway I never could have imagined. After more than half of my life on medications, I am completely free of them. Eight years into flooding my body with Juice Plus, I'm a fitness instructor, I teach Zumba classes, I have a thriving healthcare practice, and I get to teach other people about the importance of nutrition and integrative medicine. My wish for people listening who may be struggling or know someone struggling with mental health is that there are some super simple tools that can be a catalyst to transform a story of being broken to a story of healing. Thank you for asking me to share my story. Hi, my name is Marin and I live in Minnesota. My friend introduced me to Juice Plus about two years ago, and I'm so grateful that she did, because that has become the turning point in my mental health journey. My story, however, starts long before that. I've struggled with depression and a little anxiety since I was 14 years old. I was officially diagnosed at age 18 and put on a low dose of antidepressants. I always knew I didn't want to be on medication the rest of my life, if at all possible, so I kept taking myself off the meds and then crashing and then being put back on the meds. Throughout my 20s, I was followed by psychiatrists and therapists and took two different medications consistently. As the years went on, I gradually needed to keep increasing my dose until I maxed out on both meds. Then at 31, I went into total breakdown. I was unable to work, unable to stop crying, and I had no idea why. Luckily, I was able to get a ton of support through outpatient programs and was eventually able to return to work. Interestingly, however, diet and nutrition were not discussed in any of my programs. Once my friend told me about Juice Plus two years ago, things started changing for me. I ordered it because I wanted to lose weight, but I got so much more than that. All of a sudden, I had more energy, less brain fog, a more hopeful and positive outlook on life, and I was even inspired to add more healthy habits into my life. After five months on Juice Plus and with the support of my doctors, I came off my antidepressants for the first time in 15 years. That was December of 2017, and I'm so proud to say I haven't needed to go back on since then. Juice Plus has been the one simple change to help me make more positive changes. And thanks to that, I'm currently living my dream of having a medication-free pregnancy with our first due in August. Thank you so much for letting me share my mental health journey. We would like to encourage you to get back with the person who invited you to view this webinar to learn more. And thank you again, Dr. Corson, for your incredible information. Thank you everybody for joining us. Hey, thanks so much for being on. And that was an amazing talk. Um, I was just thinking about the gratitude vitamin G. And uh, I'm really grateful for this community of inspiring healthy living around the world and for just you being on. It really means the world. And uh, I'm really grateful for Dr. Melinda. Thank you, Dr. Melinda, for being on. I know you were at the, the poll earlier, the polling place. Thanks for serving our community and for serving our community here. There's a couple people still left on. I know we opened it up for questions, and so I want to introduce you. I'm going to read your uh, bio. Uh, so Dr. Melinda Morris is a re retired OB-GYN of 35 years and is a board certified in clinical nutrition for the past 16 years. She's married with four grown children, 15 grandchildren, and a beautiful great-granddaughter. As a physician, she continues to care for the health and welfare of others even after retirement from delivering babies. Dr. Morris promotes organic whole food nutrition through Juice Plus, bridging the gap between what you eat and what your body needs for health. She provides free nutritional and healthy lifestyle counseling. So thank you, Dr. Morris. Um, I, I was going to say we can take three questions. Um, I know 
uh, we'll honor people's time. So we got about five minutes if you want to take any questions. So if you want to say anything, and we'll open up for questions. Oh, sure. No, I'm, I'm very happy. You know, I, I love that presentation. Um, she covers so many different aspects of how important nutrition is for your overall health and wellness. And we've really been focusing on the impact of nutrition on anxiety and depression. And it's amazing the science that's being done now, um, looking at the cellular level and the impact, especially the omega-3s uh, mm. that have on a because omega-3s actually raise serotonin levels just like the antidepressant medication. And 30% of the public doesn't respond to the prescription medication. Mm. So, you know, food, food is our first medication. And um, so I'm, I'm happy to take any questions that anybody has. Yeah, does anybody have any questions for Dr. Morris? She's on here for a couple more, more minutes. Was it very interesting? Hopefully you Stay learned ready. something new. Hmm? What did you say, Andrea? I said, hopefully, I, I mean, I learned something new. I've heard this talk before, but it's just a good reminder of, I just didn't realize how much food really translated into our like brain. Yeah. And I like the psych, uh, what did she call it? Psy psychobiotics? Yeah. And, um, you know, the American diet changed about 150 years ago um, because we we were a rural country before then. And they grew their own food. Everybody had gardens, grew their own fruits and vegetables. And about 150 years ago, they introduced processed foods. They started manufacturing food for people because people didn't have time or the ability uh, to grow their own food. And that totally changed our diet. And they have shown that the rates of depression, inflammation, uh, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, obesity rates have increased since we've been eating processed foods instead of the natural foods that we were actually designed to eat. Hmm. Totally makes sense. Process, then you, it just doesn't, it's like putting a circle into a a square yeah. it just doesn't fit, yeah so. it, it, do, like it doesn't it. provide the same nutrition and especially with the fats uh the omega-6 and the omega-3 ratio is what's most important mm. and a healthy omega-6 omega-3 ratio is four to one American diet right now is 20 to one we eat uh, a lot more omega-6 fatty acids than the mm. omega-3s which are your healthy uh, fats. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that's why we recommend the, the Mediterranean diet. They've they've shown. Yeah, with the uh, Mediterranean diet, the healthy oils, the olive oils, uh, more fish in your diet, your fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, which have the healthy oils. They've actually done studies that show decreased depression. People switch their diet. That's all they you know just doing that alone makes a difference. Yeah, wow. Well, I haven't seen any questions. So hopefully, I know next month we talked about, I don't know if she said at the beginning, but marching into pregnancy and that's totally in your arena. Um, so I just was gonna invite everybody to come back in March, preloading for pregnancy, um, during pregnancy and postpartum. That's something I'm interested in. You know, marriage might yeah, be in the next we'll, couple of years. We'll discuss so. all, the importance of nutrition in all phases of pregnancy, even without getting pregnant, your nutrition makes a difference. Right, right. So I'm curious to hear that. So I want to invite everybody and thank you again for being on. So yeah. and have also, a good night. Uh, because having multiple uh, children hey. is important to keep healthy. Well, thank you guys for being on and hope to see you next month on our next uh, three sessions. So it will be very, very packed. So thanks again. Thanks, Shia, for being on. Bye, Shay.